Skyview wins the boys' soccer state championship. Why even the players are surprised they did it. Plus, an unlikely story of friendship on the track. And it's just been an amazing opportunity. How one girl's leadership is paying dividends for three autistic athletes and their teammates. And video games at school? The class that lets kids design their own. Skyview High School wins its first ever boys soccer championship in dramatic fashion. Hello and welcome to In The Know, I'm Chad Young. It's been a year of athletic excellence for Skyview. In the fall, the football team took second in state. The winter season saw the girls basketball team take the state title. And this spring, it was the boys soccer team. Helen Raptus shows us their improbable run. The gym at Skyview is packed and loud as the school celebrates. The boys soccer team won the Class 4A state championship, its first ever. It's not something the team thought was possible. From the beginning of the year, I really didn't think that we would go anywhere. I didn't, I mean, we were considered the underdogs. We weren't expected to do much at all, really. Skyview didn't even win its own league. But after a couple of strategic moves by coach Jen Johnson. We had to kind of find our focus. The guys started playing some serious soccer. A flurry of wins propelled them to the state title game against Central Kitsap, a team that hadn't allowed more than a single goal all year long. But the storm put that streak to rest early, scoring two quick goals. After that, it was a matter of holding on until the final whistle. That last 15 minutes of that match was so intense. And in the final moments, Coach Johnson knew she couldn't help her players anymore. The cheering from the sidelines was so loud, even if I wanted to talk to one of my players who was close to me, they couldn't hear me. In the end, an exhausted Skyview squad took the crown. I mean, that was, that was symbolic of what you know every coach says, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, you give everything. You get out of it what you put into it. And we're all just screaming and yelling. It's probably the best feeling I could ever have. For In The Know, I'm Helen Raptus. The championships for Skyview and other Vancouver public schools don't stop there. A number of athletes won individual state titles as well. In Class 4A track and field, Skyview's Taylor Barris took first place in the girls' javelin throw. Also from Skyview, Jamison Shirley won the state championship in boys' pole vaulting. At the 3A level, Columbia River's Jennifer DeBellis won the girls' pole vaulting championship for the second straight year. In tennis, Skyview freshman Sammy Hampton won the state singles title. Congrats to all of these outstanding student athletes. This year of champions in Vancouver isn't confined to the high schools. We found a group of athletes on the middle school level who are making their mark on the track. Like any other, the track at Jefferson Middle School turns athletes left four times and drops them off where they began. Run fast, run hard, and still, you haven't gone anywhere. The visiting team, Discovery Middle School, makes those left-hand turns a sea of blue as it goes through its warm-ups. And although she doesn't need to stand out, you can't miss Esme Sanchez in that bright pink sweater. She's with the team, but she's not here to run. She told me she didn't want to be on the track team, she wanted to help Sam. Sam is one of three athletes on this year's squad with autism. Big Sam, Sammy P, Gage. Like the rest of the kids, they run, they throw, and they jump. But above all, they have fun. I, I love watching them smile. They're always excited. They put a smile on my face because of how happy they are. Children with autism are often left on the sidelines. Most of them have limited verbal skills, um, and that can affect their ability to make friends. On the track team, teacher Laura Hamilton found an opportunity, introducing her autistic students not only to the thrill of competition, but also to their classmates. These kids are so encouraging and empowering and have been nothing but fantastic mentors and helpers and friends to my students. And I like how the school always motivates them to do better, and they're always cheering 
cheering for them. I, I find that really cool. Each of the students has a helper, someone to take them from event to event and provide support, both emotional and physical. Most of the time, students are paired with an adult. Big Sam has Esme. Esme was not asked to do this. Esme brought this to us and wanted to help out. Without being told, Esme understands a simple truth. Well, they're the same persons like us. And her classmates at Discovery have made a discovery of their own. I think it's been eye-opening to them that they actually have a lot in common with my students. It's not as different as they think it is. They're realizing that these are kids. These are kids just like they are. One by one, they cross the finish line. And though the track inevitably brought them back to where they started, Big Sam, Little Sam, Gage, and the rest of the Wildcats are, without a doubt, somewhere they've never been before. Esme says she can't wait to do this again. Her only regret was that the track season wasn't longer. A teacher librarian earns one of the highest honors in all of academia, a Fulbright Award, and a trip to England. Kate Burton from Fort Vancouver High School will spend six months in Sheffield, England. To earn the trip, she had to write five papers and go through a rigorous application process. Kate knows how rare this honor is. I still am stunned, okay? I still can't believe that I actually got it. There aren't a lot of these that are given out. There are two of us that are going to England from the United States. So I feel very, very fortunate to be one of two. Kate's attached to a university there and will work at one or two high schools. Her goal is to learn how students in England do research and pass their study habits along to her students. She'll also have the opportunity to sightsee, which she's looking forward to. This will be her first trip to England. Another VPS staff member earns some recognition. Elizabeth McKiley is named Educator of the Year by On Point Community Credit Union. Elizabeth is a counselor at Hudson's Bay High School. She beat out competitors from throughout the Northwest. Elizabeth was nominated by her fellow Bay staff members and also students. And that part definitely was, was really sweet and you know it means a lot to me because I've been with these kids for a lot of years. I mean some of them since second grade, some since sixth grade and most of them since ninth grade. Elizabeth has been instrumental in the development of the Academy at Bay, a program designed to prevent dropouts. Its first class will graduate this year. For winning, On Point will pay her mortgage for the next year. Ask most teachers and they'll tell you. Give students project-based work, not theories, and they'll be more engaged. That engagement leads to better performance in school. In our We Learn story, we take a look at how a technology class at Skyview is sucking in kids and challenging them in new ways. We Learn correspondent Mark Ray has more. Video games are part of students' everyday lives, like reading a book and not doing homework. So it's only natural that students would want to create their own. And that's just what's happening at a program at Skyview High School. Just go ahead and call it Master Pro because we're going to... Kim Hansen is like almost everyone under the age of 40. I do play video games pretty constantly. Her students are the same way. They signed up in droves for her video game programming class. Well, I've always played video games, wanted to figure out how to program them and just how they work. But what they learn quickly is that it's a lot harder to create a game than it is to play one. No, it's not easy. There's a lot of struggles that go into making video games. They use special software, digital art techniques, a lot of math, and the programming language C++. I just love programming and why not, you know, if you're going to program something, do something interesting with it. It's intense and because students are passionate about gaming, they're locked in. When I walk around, they're on task, they're excited, they tend not to want to leave. More than learning to make fun games, these students are learning skills they can take to any career. Project management, attention to detail, and how to deal with deadlines. You have to really narrow down what you want to do and that's difficult because there's so many things that you can and want to do that have to get cut because you just don't have the time. After they learn the basics, they get to design their own game. And so that final product is kind of a really cool goal to work towards. So it's really cool seeing what they come up with for their custom games. Kim tells me that students that struggle in other classes often don't struggle in hers. It just goes to show that if you give students something that they're passionate about, Maybe they'll pursue it, like Pac-Man being chased by a ghost. For In the Know, I'm Mark Ray. Thanks, Mark. 
School is just about over for the year, but parents and teachers are already thinking about next fall. At Chinook Elementary, moms and dads brought their pre-kindergartners in for some reading. The school hosts events like this so that students are familiar with school before their first day. Kids are less apprehensive about class, and teachers can dive right into the material with less time spent on managing behavior. Students from Chinook and other schools get a lesson in music and space. OMSI and the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra brought their new show to Skyview High School. The museum's planetarium manager gave the students a brief lecture on our universe, followed by an orchestra performance. The symphony played works by Gustav Holst, a British composer who was inspired by the planets way back in 1916. The music was accompanied by a three-dimensional video on the big screen, which gave kids a ride through space. Music played a major role in the annual fundraising luncheon for the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools. Students surprised a packed house, singing and dancing a special version of the popular song, Party Rock Anthem. A record, more than 500 people, came to the luncheon this year at the downtown Hilton. It's the biggest fundraiser of the year for the Foundation, which helps children and families across Vancouver Public Schools. This year, K2 talk show host, and a friend of this show, Helen Raptis, hosted the event. The final numbers aren't in just yet, but organizers say they raised more than last year, and that total was about $113,000. If you want to see the song and dance performance, we've posted it on our YouTube site. That's youtube.com slash vansdtv. If you're watching on Comcast, we'll also show it after this episode. The Portland-Vancouver area is nationally recognized as one of the most bicycle-friendly in the nation, so it makes sense to teach the next generation of cyclists the rules of the road. Nick Vole went to find out what they were learning and got a lesson of his own. A swarm of teenagers on bikes take over the neighborhood streets near McLaughlin Middle School. Their students and teacher Biniam Afenegas' PE class, taking part in his annual bike safety unit. You know, it's about teaching them how to safely be able to drive their bikes out in the street, you know, knowing the rules of the road. Binium invited me along for the ride. First, volunteer Joe Grolick checks my helmet to make sure it fits. Over his eyebrows to the bottom of the helmet. And Binium gives a safety lesson. Then we're out the door and into the parking lot where students have been learning how to safely ride on the street. And it was a lot more complicated than I realized. Uh, riding their bikes with traffic instead of against traffic. How to make turns. What does a stop sign mean for bikers? How to put a helmet right. Joe sums up the approach these middle schoolers are learning. Well, they're two or three years away from getting their driver's permit. This is their first driving lesson. After signaling at the stop sign. OK, we're off. Into the neighborhood to practice our signals at an intersection. A left hand down means stop. To turn, we point in the direction we need to go. Students know what happens when you don't follow the rules. Sometimes you go, you use bikes and you don't know how to use them properly. And sometimes accidents can happen. And they appreciate this chance to learn. This bike unit teaches us how to be safe and be cool at the same time. This is the 12th year Binium has offered bike lessons in class. Now we were doing some numbers and in those 12 years, I think we've served probably easily over a uh, a thousand kids. This program is made possible by volunteers and partnerships with Washington State and the Bicycle Transportation Alliance. The equipment was provided to the school by a grant and at the end of the unit the kids keep the helmets. You know I bike a lot on the weekends at home but I didn't know a lot of the safety tips these kids have taught me today so I know going forward I'm gonna be a lot better cyclist just like these kids. For In the Know, I'm Nick Vole. At the end of the unit, five students who showed outstanding behavior in class and good attendance were selected to do an all-day bike ride around Vancouver Lake. McLaughlin isn't the only school promoting bike safety. A number of elementary schools, including Roosevelt, took part in National Bike to School Day. In a normal day at Roosevelt, only six to ten kids bike to school. And today, well, there's probably over 50 or 60 kids that rode their bike today, so they're definitely pumped and excited about it. 27 students who were riding without helmets were given brand new, perfectly fitting protection. And although the primary goal of the day is safety, it also encourages fitness. Well, children need 60 minutes of physical activity every day, and in this society today, it's harder to get that 60 minutes. This is one daily routine that families could get into where their kids were out and about safely getting physical activity. A number of partners came together to support the event, including Vancouver Police, Vancouver Fire, Clark County Sheriff's Office, 
Clark County Public Health, Safe Kids, and Bike Clark County. The Durst Theater at Vancouver School of Arts and Academics gets a major upgrade thanks to a grant. Workers install a new projection screen. The screen dwarfs the old system and gives VSAA's film students an even larger canvas on which to paint. After some initial installation glitches, the screen went up and is ready for use. Students from Vancouver got to see their movies on an even larger screen. The historic Hollywood Theater in Northeast Portland hosted the International Youth Silent Film Festival. Students from Vancouver School of Arts and Academics and from Fort Vancouver High School had films accepted into the festival. First prize was $1,000, but the students' teachers say the real prize was the experience. I, I think one of the really important things for students is instead of them uh, creating work that the teacher has just invented that they're doing for the classroom, they get to see their work on the big screen. It's played uh, with a live organ, um, and it's a real film festival. The festival is an official Rose Festival event, and next year it's spreading to Ohio, Australia, and maybe even New Zealand. Two groups of young filmmakers from VSAA were nominated for the biggest prize in television, an Emmy. Students in Jim Jeffers' class submitted films for the high school division of the Northwest Regional Emmys, and two of them were nominated. One, a documentary, asked the question, what is art? The other is a post-apocalyptic love story. They didn't win, but we want to congratulate the students whose names you see on the screen right now. You can see both of their films and a recap of the International Youth Silent Film Festival in upcoming episodes of our show, The Young Filmmakers Project. In fact, we have new episodes coming out all summer, so check your listings for Comcast or see them online at youtube.com slash vanSDTV. We're just about out of time. Thanks for watching In the Know. Until next time, I'm Chad Young.